Hi everyone, well done for getting this far onto the 5.2 review quiz. So um, what we're looking at is a quick medical test for the disease herpes. As we talked about before, um, these quick tests, you could get them in a drive through So I mean, they're, they're, this one only takes six minutes, right? And it just, it, you, you uh, have a little bit of blood from your, from a prick in your finger or something so that's not going to be very accurate uh, well it's not going to be perfectly accurate so um, so there's not extensive analysis in, in, a, in a laboratory for for uh, your disease right but it is quick and cheap so with what, what we need to know is how accurate is it how good is it and um, so we're going to analyze that um, in this in this quiz here right so first of all, um, we need to understand what all these numbers mean, right? So basically 432, what that number means is that 432 people really have herpes and they tested positive, right? But if you take this number here, 18, that number means that 18 people really have herpes, but they tested negative. So that was bad, right? That's not a good thing. Okay, take this number here, 2,619. Um, that means that um, 2,619 people do not have herpes, and they tested negative. So, so that's fine, but we have a problem up here because look, 81 people do not have herpes, yet they tested positive. Now, each of these are different groups, okay? Uh, this corner they have the disease, they tested positive, that's great. This corner, they don't have the disease, they tested negative, that's great. But these two little numbers here are a problem. So so we're going to just um, analyze how much of a problem that is and how can we quantify, how can we, um, uh, how can we measure the sensitivity and specificity. So anyway, before we begin with these questions, just going to fill out the table. So how many people tested positive, right? Well, we had 430 people who have the disease testing positive, and then another 81 people who did not have the disease testing positive, right? So if we add these two numbers together, and I'm using this debt free calculator online called Desmos, so Desmos is always a good, a good uh, online calculator to use if you want to use that. Um, 432 plus um, 81, whoops. And that's 513, and I put that there. How many people tested negative? Well, 18 um, people who have the disease tested negative, along with this 2,619 who do not have the disease tested negative. So I'll go 18 plus 2619, and that's 2637, right? Right. And um, now coming down to here, how many people had the disease, right? So we have 432 who tested positive, who had the disease, and 18 who tested negative who had the disease. So 432 plus 18, 450. And then how many people did not have the disease, right? Well, we've got this 2,619 who tested negative and the 81 who tested positive. Both of these groups do not have the disease. Now again, the 81 that tested positive, that's not cool because they didn't have it and they got freaked out that they had it, but they didn't, right? So that was a mistake on behalf of the cheap herpes test, right? So 2,700, okay? And then how many people were in the study altogether? Do you know how you might figure that out? One thing to remember is each of these is a, a different group of people. The people who have disease tested positive, the people who tested negative even though they have the disease, the people who tested positive even though they were healthy, the people who tested negative who were healthy, right? So each of these four numbers are represent completely different groups of people, right? So in other words, if we add all of the four numbers together, right, so 432 plus 18 plus 81 
plus 2619. If we add them all together, we'll get our total 3150, right? And of course, you can also add the 450 and the 2700 to get this number, or you could add this and this to get this number, right? So 3150 in the entire um, it was was our sample group, right? So that's it. That's a pretty good sample. Uh, mo uh, 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 samples are of for for statistics. Uh, uh, you know, sample sizes are often you know around a thousand or more, uh, roughly. Okay. Um, and of course, it depends on the study, right? Uh, so find the condition. Question two now. Find the conditional probability a person tests negative, given that the person does not have the disease. Okay, so for this question, we have to understand what the word given is. Given means. What does it mean? Given the person does not have the disease. If you can understand that, then you should be able to do this question. The word given means that the person does not have the disease. So we know that about them. Okay. That means we need to look at this column here. Does not have the disease. Okay, that's the column we're looking at. We don't care about this column over here, the have disease. We don't care about that. We're just looking at people who do not have the disease. So the probability a person tests negative, given that they do not have the disease. Out of the people that do not have the disease, which is, by the way, 2,700. 2,700 people in this study did not have the disease. And out of those, 2,619 tested negative. So if we go over to our calculator, and we go 2619, and divide that by 2,700, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the test people who tested negative out of the people who do not have the disease total. Right? And that gives us 0.97 or 97%. Okay? So I just type in 97 there for 97%. Now, question three find the conditional probability that a person does not have the disease given that they test negative. So, again, the key is to understand what this little part of the sentence means given that they test negative. We know that they tested negative. Therefore, we only look at this row. We only look at this row, okay? So, 2,637 people tested negative overall. Now, some of them had the disease and most of them didn't, but 2,637 tested negative overall, right? So, that's what we need to look at, okay? And the question was, given that they test negative, the probability that they do not have the disease. So in other words, out of the people, just again, take the people who tested negative, 2,637, out of those, how many do not have the disease? Right? So that's 2,619, right? 2,619, put that over, 2,637. Okay? So out of the people that tested negative, 2,619 of them did not have the disease, okay? So we get this number here, 0.993, so, and the round to one decimal place, that's 99.3%, okay? 99.3%. So what that means is just, just the numbers in this study, just given the numbers in this study, uh, that, that, um, you know, we're getting a probability that, like, if you get a negative test, you're 99.3% sure that you don't have the disease. Which are 0.7% chance that you do have the disease, because the test is not perfect, all right? Okay, so on to question four. The conditional probability a person tests positive, given that the person has the disease. Again, this sentence, this part of the sentence, given that the person has the disease, means we know they have the disease, therefore we discount anyone who doesn't have the disease. We're looking at people who have the disease. 
Where are the people that have the disease in this table? Here they are, in this column here. Okay, this is the column of people who have the disease. How many people altogether have the disease in our study? 450 people altogether. See that? 450 people have the disease. Okay? So that's the group we're looking at. That's the key point. Now, out of those, the conditional probability a person tests positive. Right? So out of the 450, 432 tested positive. So I'll go 432 over 450 and I get 0 0.96. So 450 people altogether have the disease. Out of those, 432 tested positive. So just from this study, we're getting a probability that, you know, if you have the disease, if you have the disease, you're 96 your chances of testing positive are 96 percent okay so that's 96 all right question five find the conditional probability a person tests positive given that the person does not have the disease okay given that the person does not have the disease so that Set part of the sentence again means we just look at the people who do not have the disease. All right, these people here do not have the disease, and that's a total of 2,700 people. 2,700 people in the study did not have the disease. Okay, and find a conditional probability a person tests positive given that they do not have the disease. So in other words, out of those 2,700 people who do not have the disease, how many tested positive? Well, that's this 81 here, isn't it? So we go 81 over 2,700. 81 out of 2,700 people um, who don't have the disease tested positive. And that's a, so that gives a conditional probability of 0 0.03 or 3 percent okay so that's three percent uh, question six the conditional probability a person has the disease given that they test positive again this part of the sentence given that they test positive what does given mean they tested positive we're interested in this row here this people who tested positive Okay, read it again. Conditional probability that a person has a disease given that they test positive. Okay, so we're interested in this row here, just the people who tested positive, right? So out of so we have 513 people altogether who tested positive, right? And um, oh gosh, I forgot it again. Uh, let's see person has the disease sorry conditional probability a person has the disease given that they test positive okay so so we got 513 people who tested positive and out of those 432 have the disease so if I do this 432 over 513 look at that 400 out of the people who tested positive and again we we ignore anyone who tested negative these people are not part of this question just these guys up here so so out of the 513 who tested positive, 432 had the disease. Therefore, our conditional probability is 84.2%. Okay. So what that means is, if you test positive, like let's say you take this test and it says positive, there's an 84.2% chance that you have the disease, which leaves about a 16% chance that you don't. So if you test positive, it's not not near certain that you have the disease, right? Um, but if we combine this, by the way, I'm just doing this. So, so 84.2 is the answer there. But I just can't resist doing a little. Um, yeah, 84.2. Can't resist doing a little bit of having a little bit of fun here. I mean, um, the chances that you have the disease are 0 0.842, right? 
But if you take a test a second time, you just multiply that by 0. Point, um, oh, so sorry. So so roughly the chances so so if you test positive, the chance that you um, don't have the disease is actually about 16%, 0.16. And so you're still not sure with one positive test on this on this one. But why not just go ahead and get another one? It's cheap. It only takes six minutes. Now we have one probability after, uh, on top, one event happening after another event. So the chances that you don't have the disease, if you get, imagine you get two positive tests in a row. You get two positive tests in a row, you do this, 0 0.16 times 0 0.16. And that gives 0 0.02, right? So even though the test isn't um, very accurate if you get a positive result, because 16% chance that you're healthy, um, if you get two positive results in a row, you know, the chances of you being healthy or, or not having herpes is, is uh, about 2 or 3%. All right, so that, that brings it way down. So that's what you can do with these tests. Just take two in a row, and if they're both positive, then yes, you probably have it, right? Um, anyway, question seven. Match the medical test and quantity with the corresponding question above. All right. So sensitivity is, um, is the test sensing the presence of the disease in your body? Right? It, that's what sense is it sensing it. So in other words, if you have the disease, is it going to test positive? So that's um, so that's this one here. The conditional probability a person tests positive given that they have the disease. Okay. Now specificity. Specificity is will the test identify that you're, be specific that you're actually healthy. Um, so will it kind of specify the healthy people, right? So that one is um, you don't have the disease and you test negative, right? So given that you don't have the disease, you test negative. Now, which one was that? Um, let's see here. Okay, this one. Find the condition probability person test negative given that they don't have the disease. So that 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 goes there. Alright. Now positive predictive value means um, if you get a positive result, how accurate is that? <laughs> right? So given that you were tested positive, how much can you trust that, right? And and that's what we just worked on recently. So that's this one here, right? The probability you have the disease given that you test positive. That's that question. A negative predictive value is how accurate is, like, how much can you trust a negative test? Okay. So when you take a negative test, you want to know that, hey, okay, this is, I don't have the disease then, right? Like, how much can you trust the test when it gives you a negative result, right? So that's negative predictive value. So this one would be, um, You've got a negative test result. Now, what's the chances you're actually healthy, right? So let's see if we, which one we can find. That. So, so given that you test negative is what we're looking for, and here, condition probability a person does not have the disease given that they test negative. That's the one for negative predictive value. All right. So I hope this is a good review, and I hope um, we cleared up some confusions on this question. And uh, hope you find that it's um, pretty relevant to real life. You know, think about uh, the kind of coronavirus tests and uh, pregnancy tests and all sorts of tests out there that are cheap. You can you know drive through. You can pick them up the, at the pharmacy, but you're not sending your blood in for like some lab work or something, right? So so they're cheap. They're quick. Anyone can do them. And if if in doubt, take it twice, right? Just to be sure, right? Because <laughs> if it like I said, if it gives you a positive result, uh, you can always take it again. And because two positives in a row probably means you got the disease. But no, no matter you know, no matter how. Um, and similarly, you know, if you want to really be sure, get two negative results in a row in a row when you're probably negative. Okay.